Hey everybody, welcome back. In this lecture, I'd like to talk about the evolution of life cycles. Now that we have a good understanding of our phylogenetic relationships among some of these major groups of land plants or the embryophytes, including liverworts, hornworts, and mosses, those paraphyletic bryophytes, and then the monophyletic vascular plants, we can start to look at how the life cycle has evolved um, from our green algal ancestors, our green algal sister groups through um, the vascular plants and what changes we've seen to that alternation of generations um, life cycle that we see in land plants. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and share our slides and we'll come back to looking at where, um, where we left off last time. And so when we take a look at, here's our phylogeny again, of, uh, of land plants, the embryophytes. Um, we have sister to the land plants, we've got our green algae. So this is uh, Coleochaetae, this is one of our Caraphysian green algae, and green algal relatives. Um, and that sister to land plants. And remember that right here, we have the evolution of, right on this side, the alternation of generations. Just as a reminder, remember the alternation of generations is where we have separate multicellular gametophyte or haploid generation that produces gametes. And then we have the separate multicellular sporophyte generation, diploid generation, that produces spores via meiosis. Um, I'll go through several detailed um, life cycles today. Remember that's the general life cycle alternating between haploid gametophyte generation and diploid sporophyte generation with those transitions between the generations being fertilization of, from the gametes, gametes uh, coming in the gametophyte generation, fertilizing to transfer, to build that zygote, make that zygote, the zygote then undergoes mitosis, builds a mature diploid sporophyte, and then we have uh, meiosis in that sporophyte producing spores and spores are the first generation first cell of the gametophyte generation and one of the things that we see throughout the throughout this evolutionary um these evolutionary transitions is an elaboration of the sporophyte generation as we go from our liverworts to vascular plants So from liverworts to vascular plants. And so remember in, the, in those liverworts, that gametophyte is our dominant part of our life cycle. Um, that continues the gametophyte dominance and sporophyte dependence. Uh, that continues throughout the, uh, you know, throughout the bryophyte lineages where that sporophyte is still dependent in our, in our mosses um, and the gametophyte is still the dominant. And that then switches though in our vascular plant. So in our vascular plant, we actually have a dominant sporophyte and a very reduced gametophyte. And I'll go through, I'll go through these, uh, th these different transitions here. And so just as a reminder, when we look at our ancestral sort of green plant life cycle, this is the life cycle that we see in uh, the current life cycle that we see in green algae today, where we have a multicellular adult, which is haploid. So these are haploid dominant. And those, uh, those gametes, um, the, those, that haploid dominant uh, adult then produces gametes via mitosis. Um, and so that sperm and egg are produced via mitosis. And then we have fertilization occurring where sperm and egg are fused together and they form the zygote. The zygote, remember, is the only diploid part of this. And so this is not multicellular. 
the only diploid part of the life cycle is that zygote. The meiosis occurs um, in that zygote and produces spores, and those those spores then go out and uh, and are those spores then go out right here and are part of the um, and 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 germinate into that multi and grow into that multicellular adult and go back through the life cycle. Now, if we, we haven't looked in detail, but I want to look in detail now at our bryophyte life cycle. And so just as, uh, so as a reminder, bryophyte life cycles are gametophyte dominant. And sporophyte dependent. I'll show you that here. Uh, and our sporophytes are unbranched. And that'll become a bit important in just a minute. Okay, so here I'm showing a moss life cycle. This is the um, uh, life cycle of a moss, but this would apply to our other bryophyte lineages as well, the liverworts and the hornworts. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and, and start out with uh, with the spore. So that spore is the first cell of the gametophyte generation. Um, and this spore then germinates um, and begins growing. And this is an important stage uh, in the life cycle, in mosses specifically, and I'll show you this back on the life cycle, but in mosses, and I'll, so I'll note that in here, in mosses, the gametophyte has what's called a proto a protonemal stage. So in mosses only, we have this protonemal stage. And all this is, is, is filamentous growth. And what that filamentous growth does is it allows for multiple gametophytes multiple gametophyte bodies to be formed, which then results in multiple sporophytes later on. And so, um, so that spore germinates into this protonemal stage. Um, those then grow into mature haploid gametophytes, and those haploid gametophytes then um, form eggs, form gametes, eggs, and sperm. Um, inside of those, those special structures. Remember the archegonia, is the female uh, multicellular reproductive structure, and the antheridia is the male multicellular reproductive structure. Um, the sperm then, this is true in all bryophytes, the sperm have flagella and the sperm actually swim to the egg. And those sperm will swim down the neck of the archegonium and actually fertilize the egg um, inside of the archegonium. And so many people don't, realize that land plants actually, some land plant lineages, all of our bryophytes, have modal sperm. So these sperm actually swim. This is one of the reasons why, why our bryophyte lineages are necessarily small in their, uh, in their stature um, and have to live in wet environments. And so for the sperm to actually be able to get from the antheridia to the archegonia and to, to, to be able to fertilize that egg cell, they actually have to swim through the surface film of water um, and, and enter into the archegonium. So water is a necessary component to this. Once that uh, fertilization occurs, then we've transitioned between our gametophyte stage and our, between our gametophyte stage of the life cycle and our sporophyte stage of the life cycle. And so, the sporophyte, initial sporophyte begins developing, the developing sporophyte develops inside of the gametophyte tissue. So the green here, this is our archegonium, this is gametophyte tissue. Um, that sporophyte is, while it's developing, remember it's getting nutrients from the, from the gametophyte uh, as well. Um, once that uh, sporophyte matures, it matures as the capsule. And so this is our mature sporophyte, that stalk and capsule. 
in the um, uh, in a moss. Uh, it, that stock and capsule. I'll show you some pictures of what these look like in liverworts and in, in hornworts as well. Um, but that's our that's our mature sporophyte. So that's the only diploid stage of the of the life cycle. Meiosis then occurs inside of that capsule, um, and that's our transition then between the sporophyte and the gametophyte generation. Those spores come out, we germinate again, and we head back through the life cycle. And so that's our um, our standard um, our standard uh, life cycle for for the bryophytes, and in this case, um, for mosses specifically. So we've got gametophyte dominant, sporophyte defendant. Sporophytes are unbranched and nutritionally dependent on that, uh, on that uh, mature gametophyte. Okay. So let's look at some of what these uh, some of what these look like. Um, here we have our uh, here we have some images of a microscope image of an embryo. Um, this embryo here is the diploid sporophyte, and this is inside of the archegonium. And so here is the embryo part of that. So that's the diploid sporophyte. that is nutritionally dependent on that surrounding gametophyte tissue. Um, so if we look at uh, a moss there on the right hand side, if we look at a moss, this is the only part of this that's diploid. So this is our diploid sporophyte. And then the green part below that, this green, the green portion of the moss below that sporophyte is the haploid gametophyte stage of the life cycle. Um, if you if we just scroll back a couple of slides here and look at our, our life cycle, um, this is true in, uh, this is true in, this same style of life cycle is true in liverworts as well as hornworts and, and, in, um, and in mosses. And then I've inserted in here this uh, uh, upright gametophyte and that's, that's the result of this protonemal stage that I just showed you, that filamentous stage in the, the life cycle of mosses. So the other thing that I have added in here is this thing called Cooksonia. Well, Cooksonia is actually a fossil. Um, uh, and and I, wanna, I wanna go ahead and show you some of those. And so this is a fossil plant um, that was present around four, this, this fossil is about 430 million years old. So this is present during the um, Silurian. So this is one of those Silurian plant fossils. Remember that Silurian Devonian explosion where we see all the different morphologies evolving. And these are what are oftentimes considered provascular plants. And so while they don't uh, have vascular tissue in the same way um, that our modern vascular plants do, Cooksonia is a, is a provascular plant. And the main reason that I'm showing you this is that if we see these fossils, these fossils are actually of sporophytes, and we see that these sporophytes are branched. So we've got branched sporophytes. This is kind of an intermediate between our vascular plants and our, and our non-vascular plants or bryophytes, with bryophytes having unbranched sporophytes that were dependent on the gametophytes. These Cooksonia fossils, or these provascular plants have branch sporophytes, but um, uh, branch, they have branch sporophytes that are dependent on those gametophytes. So it's this intermediate, um, intermediate for, uh, form. These are also called polysporangia plants. Polysporangia plants, meaning that they've got more than one sporangium where those, uh, 
and those are shown here as well, where the spores are produced inside of the um, inside of those capsules of those sporangia. Yeah. Okay, so that's our bryophyte uh, life cycle. And then we see this sort of intermediate form that has these branch sporophytes, these polysporangiate plants. And then um, we see that these actually branch more and more. Um, and there are other fossil forms of polysporangiate plants. So these are more polysporangiates. And we see that they end up being very highly branched. And so we see our sporangia, those multiple sporangia um, uh, at the ends of all of these, this highly branched sporophyte that we see here. Okay, so let's take a, another step forward and we'll look at now that sort of modern vascular plant life cycle. And this one is represented by a fern life cycle. Um, and so here we actually have a big switch where instead of the gametophyte being dominant, part of the life cycle like we see in our non-vascular plants, in our vascular plants, the sporophyte is the dominant part of the life cycle. So these are sporophyte dominant now. And so what I mean when I say that is if you're to walk out into the woods or into the wild and um, into nature and, and look at these plants and we see, ah, I recognize that as a fern, what part of the life cycle am I actually seeing? That's what I mean by dominant. So when I walk out and look at a fern, this is typically what I'm seeing. Um, I see that part and I say, okay, this is sporophyte dominant. When I walk outside and I look at a moss, what part do I see? What's that green? The green part that I see and I say, oh, there's a map of mosses, that's the gametophyte, and so that's gametophyte dominant. Okay, so here in modern, in our fern life cycle, we've got a sporophyte dominant life cycle, and the gametophyte is much reduced. In both lycophytes and ferns, like the ferns that are shown here, the gametophyte is actually free living. And I'll show you that. So now it's not dependent, uh, right? This is free living and independent. And the sporophyte is also free living. So the sporophyte is also independent. And so let's just walk through this life cycle so you can see what I mean when I'm, when I'm talking about this. And so let's, I like to always start um, with meiosis and the formation of spores. And so we'll start right here at the transition between sporophyte and gametophyte generations. Um, those spores are produced via meiosis in sporangia. Um, that spore is wind dispersed and sent out into the world and it grows into a developing gametophyte. When that gametophyte is mature, uh, the mature gametophyte produces both, uh, both antheridia and archegonia. Remember, those are our multicellular reproductive structures, the antheridia being the male side, the archegonia being the female uh, side. Inside of the antheridia, uh, sperm are produced, and inside of the archegonia, egg, an egg is produced. And so we've got our gametes formed by mitosis in that gametophyte. At that point, the sperm again swim to the egg. So in ferns, we also have modal sperm. So ferns, just like we have with, uh, in, in, uh, in our bryophyte lineages with modal sperm, Ferns have modal sperm as well. This should be um, this should be a mind blowing sort of uh, a mind blowing thing for you. So those the fertilization occurs. Um, the sperm swims down the neck of the archegonium and uh, fertilizes that egg um, to form the zygote. That's our transition between the gametophyte generation 
and the sporophyte generation, um, we form that diploid uh, zygote. That zygote initially begins to develop dependent on the gametophyte um, or getting nutrition from the gametophyte. That's as land plant synapomorphy, um, but eventually gains its independence um, and grows into the mature sporophyte part of the generation. And so um, this part of the, uh, in ferns, and this is the same in lycophytes, I haven't shown you lycophytes in detail, but I will, um, in these two lineages of, uh, of land plants, we actually have these independent gametophytes growing. Um, and so what these are, these are small, these are actually separate little plants that are growing um, on the, uh, you know, at ground level, oftentimes under the leaf litter or around the ground. They're small, um, but they are visible with the naked eye. Um, they're, they're, they're quite small. And uh, these are growing into these independent little plants. This is like when I was saying, this is like if our sperm actually sort of walked away, grew into an individual, and then Produce, uh, produce, more, produce spores, more of themselves by mitosis or something. This is equivalent to that. This is that little organism that all it's made to do is to produce gametes. Um, and those gametes then are, uh, you know, swim through these films of water into, uh, you know, to fertilize the egg. This is a separate little organism that's, that's out there, a uh, separate part of the life cycle. Now, I've, I'm using this fern as an example of a, of a vascular plant lineage. Vascular plants include both lycophytes and ferns. They also include seed plants. And so our seed plants are those gymnosperms and angiosperms, so conifers and flowering plants. Um, and they also have a, a similar life cycle. There are differences in the details of the gametophyte, and that's the, um, that's the, the biggest part. But these, just to sort of have this on the here, uh, seed plants have free-living uh, free sporophytes and uh, dependent gametophytes. So now, Right. So now we've actually flipped this completely. We start out in our life cycle of, uh, we start out in our, in, our, in our alternation of generation land plant life cycle with the sporophyte being dom with the gametophyte being dominant and the sporophyte being uh, dependent. So we start out gametophyte dominant, sporophyte dependent. And we transition, and we transition to all the way through our seed plants to being um, sporophyte dominant. And gametophyte dependent. The ferns and lycophytes are, are in our vascular plant lineages. We can add those in real quick, lycophytes and ferns. And then uh, our vascular plants are made up of lycophytes, ferns, and seed plants. So those three lineages um, make up all of those vascular plants. And so we see this transition from lycophytes and ferns and seed plants from to sporophyte dominance. So here we end up with our dominant sporophyte, sporodominant. Um, and we transition to sporophyte dominance. These lycophytes and ferns both have gametophytes are independent. And then finally in seed plants, we end up with gametophytes being dependent. 
And so we can think about this in terms of, uh, in terms of this life cycle um, evolution. We can think about this as sort of the goal here is to really increase the number of spores that we put out into the world uh, pre-fertilization sorry the, we increase the number of increase the number of spores per fertilization event explain what I mean by that in just a second and we increase dispersal of those spores and so in mosses what we do that you know as we head through liverworts hornworts we end up with in in liverworts and hornworts liverworts here hornworts here we end up with basically one sporophyte one unbranched sporophyte per fertilization event one unbranched sporophyte per fertilization when we move into mosses because of this protonemal uh, filamentous stage we get multiple sporophytes per uh, per spore one spore germinated into these mul this, this filamentous stage and we're able to put up multiple gametophyte branches and we end up with those multiple sporophytes per. When we move to vascular plants, we have many sporangia on these branch sporophytes. And so we've increased that even more and we end up with a larger size uh, which increases dispersal. And so I think uh, we should ask why elaborate on the sporophyte phase? What's the advantage? What's our evolutionary advantage to elaborating on the sporophyte generation as we go through this? And I think we can think about a few different, uh, a few different reasons about why that might be. One of those I want to emphasize is that sporophytes are diploid. So remember that, that sporophytes are diploid organisms. And so because of that, one of these reasons uh, for elaborating on the sporophyte generation is that the diploid itself are not as sensitive to deleterious mutations. So in that sense, we can mask deleterious recessive mutations. Think back to your Mendelian genetics. Um, other, uh, other reasons is that the sporophyte itself are free to get larger. So we can get that size up and end up with uh, um, a couple of advantages to that. The and, and the reason these are free to get larger is that the gametophytes themselves are constrained by the reproductive system. They're constrained by sperm needing to get to the egg, sperm swimming to the egg. Are constrained. by the reproductive system. And I'll just put as an example, e.g. sperm swimming to eggs. Swimming to the egg. 
and so why is why are spore fights free to get larger? Why is that an advantage? And there's a, a few reasons why that's an advantage. One of these uh, is competition for light. You can get bigger. This was going to select for increased height. Um, and then uh, when we have the selection for increased height, we also increase our uh, spore dispersal with those larger sizes. And so I think these are uh, these are a couple of the main reasons why we would want to elaborate on uh on the sporophyte generation rather than on um, on the on the gametophyte generation increase our dispersal decrease that competition for light mask our recessive deleterious um, mutations and so you're a little bit more uh, um, uh, a little bit buffered from from any mutation events that might happen Okay, I'm gonna pause here um, and uh, come back in a little bit and start working our way into showing you some examples of some of our, uh, some of these vascular plant lineages and a few more of the lineage specific um, synapomorphies and adaptations that have occurred in the evolution of, uh, of land plants.